Scientists believe they found a groundbreaking new energy source and it's virtually unlimited. You w probably walked by it a bunch of times today. When we say plastic is everywhere, that is not an exaggeration. Almost 30 years ago, a Japanese underwater ROV spotted a plastic bag floating along the depths of the Mariana Trench, the deepest point in all of the world's oceans. The oil-based product is now embedded in Earth's geological layer as a new sedimentary rock known as plastistone, stone made of plastic. And the average adult human brain likely contains up to a spoon's worth of microplastic. Unfortunately, whether we like it or not, the global scourge of plastic is so dire that the United Nations is currently developing a plastics treaty. Due to our ongoing failure to control the proliferation of this oil-based menace, some scientists as well as the oil and plastics industry at large turn to controversial method to help alleviate the problem. Converting the plastic back into usable oil. If it's scaled up efficiently, scientists say the pyrolysis oil from plastics could feed directly into energy-hungry technologies that require fuel to produce heat and electricity such as boilers, furnaces, and turbines, as well as diesel for trucks, trains, and ships. This is a global effort, and scientists working on the problem hope to create an innovative process that will satisfy multiple petroleum-based needs and encourage less reliance on fossil fuels that are wrecking the environment. But the current method is arguably inefficient and still needs to be proven. Recently, researchers from the Yale University have made a, a dent in that inefficiency. They successfully tested a new way to produce more pyrolysis oil at less cost. It shows promise for scaling up production in the future, which is a crucial step for making plastic trash a viable source of energy. The chief method of pulling off this chemical wizardry starts with pyrolysis, which applies heat to a material in the absence of oxygen when the dial is turned up to 900 degrees celsius which is 1652 degrees fahrenheit plastics polymer chains break down into hydrocarbon molecules these are organic compounds made mainly of carbon and hydrogen atoms and are basic molecule required for creating fuel energy results vary but pyrolysis usually turns about 60 percent of plastic into these raw materials. Various pyrolysis oil product production methods exist, but they typically use a catalyst such as a mineral zeolite to enhance the breakdown of materials and increase the yields. The new Yale study discovered a method that boosts the yield to roughly 66% without the need for a catalyst at all. And this could be a huge cost saver, said materials engineer Ling Bing Hu, PhD in Yale University Press Statement. He said, whenever you talk about catalysts, they're very expensive and you have a lifetime issue because catalysts will eventually die by different means, he said. And Hu co-authored a paper detailing the process in the journal Nature Chemical Engineering earlier this summer. The key to this innovation was creating a three-section 3D printed carbon column reactor with each section containing a different pore size. As chemicals pass through the reactor, the different pore sizes, one millimeter, 500 micrometers, and 200 nanometers, could effect effectively control the progress of the reaction. And next, the researchers planned how to scale up the process. So they experiment with the construction, uh, constructing the reactor using readily available carbon felt, a high temperature resistant flexible material. Even without determining ideal pore sizes, they still achieve a high yield of around 56%. Their work so far shows that advanced recycling via pyrolysis still has room for sustainability and efficiency improvement. While increasing yields of pyrolysis oil and making the process cost-effective is important, scaling up also comes with some problems of its own that scientists must overcome. The most obvious one is the immense amount of energy of current technology uses, which means more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, as well as other waste products. 
expert speaking with the independent investigative nonprofit news organization ProPublica, called the broader paralysis concept a fairy tale, quote unquote, a convenient story often tooted by oil companies and plastic producers so they can keep relying on fossil fuels. At least for the foreseeable future, paralysis is not a cure-all for our plastic problems. But as scientists continue to pursue creative innovations like Q and his team, they could one day turn this fairy tale into a real solution to the world's ever-growing plastic crisis, with the world's uh, producing more single-use plastic than ever before, it's clear that, at least for now, the best kind of plastic is still one that's never made on the made in the first place. And this is in uh, on Popular Mechanics by Darren Arf. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.